Uh, let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you to all the people who decide to sign up and to join us for this session. Uh, so my name is Debbie Reynolds. They call me the Data Diva. I'm the CEO, Chief Data Privacy Officer uh, of uh, and founder of Debbie Reynolds Consulting. Um, I have alarms going off here. Uh, so the session we're gonna be talking about today is privacy trust and the road ahead, strengthening organizations by reducing privacy risk. So this session really is going to be um, me, Lawrence, and um, Rob Andrews from Privacy and Cookies talking about just the general things that, that companies go through or individuals go through when they're thinking about privacy and how this impacts you know, probably the most popular way the individuals uh, interact with technology uh, as it relates to tracking, which is websites. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing so now I think people can see us, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I would love for, uh, for Lawrence Shaw and Rob Andrews to, to introduce themselves. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, oh, so you can so, first, hello, go yeah, on. So, yeah, so, so good morning, everybody. Yes, thank you, Debbie. Um, great to meet you all. Um, Lawrence Shaw, um, founder of sort of a company called Privacy and Cookies. Um, really has been doing sort of working in the sort of privacy sector since 2008, um, deploying various things like consent management platforms, um, very recently moved into more of the sort of benchmarking and auditing of websites. And I can hand over to Rob to say hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming. And yeah, great, great to have seen me on the call today. And thanks, Debbie, for, for getting us along. So I'm Rob Andrews, and I am the commercial director here at uh, Privacy and Cookies. I'm a relative newbie to uh, privacy, been involved for a couple of years now, um, but I got involved with Privacy and Cookies uh, uh, because I was working for an organization that uh, was involved very much around the future of work. And I think some of the automation and solutions that Privacy and Cookies got are very relevant to that. And so uh, that's my background and, and, and that's why I'm here. And hopefully we'll talk a lot more about that as we move forward. Great, thank you so much. Uh, what maybe I should just start out by talking about sort of why we sort of how we started and why we're doing this and why we decided to try to join forces and collaborate about this. So, Rob actually contacted me on LinkedIn and he said, "Oh, I have some things I want to show you," and I was really blown away by the work that you all had really put in and uh, you know your focus on client client or. Uh, consumer or individual facing uh, websites and your deep knowledge there of, about tracking. And then at that time, you all had done the London Index and you were thinking about doing the Fortune 500. So when we were talking, I think you decided to do the Fortune 1000. So you sort of went away for, for a few months and worked on that. And so again, I was really uh, happy to see, you know, the index. I thought it really went really well. So um, I think it's a really cool tool. Uh, I like it a lot and I'm happy that, you know, we're able to collaborate. I mean, if nothing else, I think it gets the conversation started about tracking and, and it really uh, helps people who, people like me who are, you know, like data privacy officers or someone who's responsible for privacy or just wanna, wanna know, maybe, maybe there's something um, that you quickly want to get a gauge on uh, for a client or for yourself. So the Fortune 1000 is just an example of, of what you can do with this type of tool. But then you also can go directly to uh, the, the Rethink Privacy website and put in any website link that you want, right, to be able to get some information. So. Um, before we start, I want to do a couple of polls to get some uh, uh, information about the audience. So I want to launch one of these. Let's see. See what I can get going here. You all have to forgive me. I'm challenged here. So uh, let's see. Let's see. All right. Okay. So I wanted to try to find out from people what is their uh, job function. And I'll just 
uh, read out the results. Uh, so if people can start polling, that'd be great. I'll give you about five more seconds <laughs> to see. Okay. So uh, let's see. It looks like we're about 50-50. Uh, so 50% legal compliance. Uh, for, no, okay. 50% legal compliance or 40% legal compliance, 40% consulting and the rest uh, other. Uh, so that's great. That's good to know. Uh, so let's do, cool. So that's great. That's good to know uh, for the audience. I want to do one more. Uh, actually, I have three polls. I'm curious about the location of attendees. This would be interesting. Uh, so I just want to get a gauge of where people are joining from today. So it's a horse race here between North America and Europe. <laughs> Have some people from Africa, actually. Very nice, very nice. A lot of Europe, that's from Lawrence and Rob, I'm sure. Uh, so we have about, uh, I want to say 50% Europe, uh, like 30% North America and 17% uh, Africa. That's great, that's great, good to know. And then the last one will be uh, your big privacy challenge. So here we go. I just threw out some things that I thought people, uh, you know, may be challenged with uh, just to get an idea. So I would love you guys to participate with this. Sweet. So it looks like uh, in terms of challenges for, that people are having, it looks like, oh, there's a lot of other here. So this is a horse race between uh, having tools uh, to make your work easier. That's, uh, I think that's 20% managing notice and consent of individuals uh, and breaking down uh, silos with the organizations. And 40% is other. So. I'm in this. Uh, perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so that's some good information there, um, especially for the people who put other, what their privacy challenges are. If you all have any questions, definitely enter them into the Q&A. So as we're talking, um, you know, throughout, uh, I may be able to throw out some questions if you guys have them. Uh, but I had a couple questions that I wanted to ask uh, Rob and Lawrence that we can kind of discuss. So um, what are the challenges that organizations are really having around managing risk for data privacy? What are you seeing? Well, I think first of all, uh, thanks Debbie on this, I think probably the, the big challenge we see is just kind of that, how do you quantify that risk? And how are you, uh, you know, the awareness of, of, of that risk? And that, that that's, that's one of the challenges we see. So, okay, when you comes comes to privacy, and obviously, you know, cookies and tracking technologies that we specifically deal with, um, you know, there's the I guess you are there's this you know you're compliant or non-compliant. But actually, you know, I think that all organisations always working working towards that compliance. But how bad is the risk? And I think that's what's been that's been uh, the challenge today and for DPOs and for organizations and boardrooms, et cetera, quantifying that has really been, um, has, has, has been a big challenge, uh, which is obviously one of the reasons that we've, we've, we've sort of started to put together this in index and the scoring system. Is there any, anything you want to add to that, that Lawrence? Are you anyone else? There we go. Uh, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, the, um, I think really, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, organizations sort of need to know where they are. I mean, you can't manage risk if you don't know the sort of starting point. Um, and also, I mean, organizations have, a lot of people have invested in technology and sort of you know, started to do things about it. But the, the, the sophistication of some of the sort of big data aggregators, some of the sort of things that happen behind the scenes um, without, without even the consent of the organization, let alone sort of collecting the consent of the individual, is really causing organizations sort of unexpected failure 
um, despite all the efforts they're putting in, because you know, the sophistication of the data collectors, data aggregators is considerable, shall we say. Um, so a lot of people have quite tried and done some work around it. Um, but as you see, when we'll go on and do the index, there's some issues, there's some quite quantifiable serious issues that could be in, could help improve. Yeah, so yeah, after we finish kind of the, the Q&A and talking sections, and I'll pepper in questions that people have, uh, Lawrence is going to demonstrate uh, the index, so I think that would be really cool. So, uh, Lawrence, I'm going to pose this to you first. Uh, how does trust impact businesses with data management? Um, I know that we talk about fines a lot, and that gets talked about, right? But I think the customer trust is a huge issue um, because, in my view, if customers can't trust the organizations, they're going to lose those customers or they're not going to be able to get customers. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, well, I think trust is probably one of the most valuable commodities online these days. Um, and it's so easy to lose it. Um, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, we weren't really aware of the value of our data. And now we are, I think more and more people are aware of the value of their data and also how organizations use the data. I mean, there's been a number of sort of TV programs, you know, it, it's got featured in films and, and et cetera, um, you know, how, how, it, how it can even impact presidential campaigns. Um, I mean, none of, you know, none of us like, would like to have our sort of trust broken, um, but in privacy, I think there's been a lot of historic views, uh, especially in certain sectors where they had a right to the data and sort of a lot of, we, you know, we have the right to this data, we can take data, which is actually, you know, is now sort of having quite negative connotations for those sort of brands, you know, and uh, most people, I don't, think, I don't think people have a problem with trusting the, 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 the larger brands and the sort of super brands, as long as there's transparency in what people are doing and the, the, the way data is being collected. And also the way the data, I mean, we all know that, you know, if we go, we go on a website, we search for certain products, you know, likelihood that that advert's going to appear, or, you know, for, for selling one of those products on another website. You know, we we know that happens, but it it's potentially if a if an email arrives in your inbox the following day to say, oh, by the way, we've got a special offer on this product, and you think, where's that email? You know, how do they get my details? And then worse, it, the worst sort of you think, well, hold on a minute, you've got my details, and then you have an option to subscribe, and you click the subscribe, and it doesn't work, or they don't they don't unsubscribe you. And I think that's the thing that all the businesses don't you know you've only got one chance to get it right with people online there's plenty of alternatives right what do you think Rob? well i well i trust i think in you know in all of our business relationships you know that's obviously key to all of our interactions and has been since the you know since since, since for forever and a day and, and yet there seems to have been or have been has been a diff, different attitude online, which I think Lawrence has alluded to in the fact that, you know, our, our privacy may not have been respected in the way we'd expect in, in every other day, you know, in every, in every other aspect of the way we our lives and we do business. And I think, I think that is slowly changing. And I think that, uh, and it can't come fast enough. And I think there is definitely an, an appetite and an awareness within organizations that they need to do this and, and trust being very, very important, particularly, you know, for consumer brands, etc. Um, so I think they, I think that, I think they're becoming aware of it and want to and understand the value of trust. I think actually um, implementing and delivering against the promise, if you like, of respecting people's data is proving more challenging. And I think that's where the real threat lies uh, for, for you know, in trust, trust moving forward. So I think it's a lot of work to be done still, even though I think attitudes are changing. That's great. Um, I just want to throw in here, uh, Stephen Beckett made, made a comment where he says he agrees with this about the need to keep up with software, hardware, the importance of cybersecurity in relation to cookies and consent. As a, as a business owner who's been delivering data privacy education for over 25 years, I believe the starting point has to be human education in terms of privacy by design, uh, implementation of uh, the ideology into privacy education for employees and customers. I think that's important, right? Um, 
why do you all think thank you for that steve i appreciate that uh he's a fan a fan of us <laughs> uh i know we're talking a lot about transparency and transparency is really key but i would love for you all to talk about why did you think it was important to create this um, privacy risk index for the Fortune 1000? So I, shall I kick, kick that one off? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think the, the the top of the top of the shop for that one has to be, you know, awareness of the issue, and I've kind of alluded to, to that before uh, before. And I think until, I mean, the index is a, is a great way of showing that. Um, it's to, you know, you, I, I don't think you're comparing necessarily against other organisations in your same sector clearly, because it's an index for the Fortune uh, 1000. But what it, I think what it does show is that um, there's a lot of work to be done, and uh, I think until the you know, the index being out there really helps people to focus attention on that. So that's really, I think that's really good uh, from that perspective. And I think the other thing about the index, it's a real public way. Um, by publishing the index of showing demonstrating a commitment to the privacy and improvement because you know the obviously the good thing about the the index is the you know the the, the measure if you like your privacy respect score so i think it's a real opportunity for organizations to demonstrate their commitment to this and their improvement over time so that that's that's one of that's really why we've done this yeah and then i'll point out to the way the index works is that uh, uh, Lawrence and Rob are going to update uh, this, I think, once a month, right, uh, to be able to show progress over time. So if there's a company that's on the index, you know, monthly, you'll be able to go and see, like, maybe they got better. Hopefully, they didn't get worse. <laughs> but sometimes that happens, too. Um, a lot of times, this, uh, uh, it happens because companies are always looking to either improve their service or add on new services so when they're adding on new services and as you know you know people who are in you know like education or data privacy roles you know technology or new technology or whenever we bring on something new it creates like a new wrinkle and everything so it's like you have to start again at the, the starting line uh, to be able to evaluate that and how it impacts uh, uh, your business so that's interesting so uh, many people interact with businesses using websites. So explain why this is important and how that impacts privacy. Oh, do you want to say that one more? Yeah, so I think when a lot of people interact with websites, right? So they're, they're, they, people just do whatever they want on the internet but they may not be aware of things that happen behind the scenes when yeah. they're entering data on a website. So talk a little bit about that and how that impacts privacy, maybe in ways that people aren't thinking about. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I suppose that, that's, that, that's the big challenge for everybody. They, do they really know where their data is going and how their data is being used? Um, I mean, an example is you, you know you could you could put your details into a website. You know, if you know, there's a lot of focus these days on sort of modern cars, you know, the electric cars, um, you you could put your data in. You could buy 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 a buy a new car um, with your sort of your sort of retail to your car dealer. That information could then be shared with the sort of the people who provide charging points, the people who provide the, the sort of the the network of charging points, and then any number of sort of stations that operate. Um, the big challenge, although sort of you know the right to be forgotten and the sort of right to recall your data is there, we haven't really got to the point where you know, your data has now been merged with three or four different organisations. And you know the we call the privacy co-op that are trying to sort of look at how we can actually have our data stored once. It's, I mean, it sounds a great. I met the guy a couple of weeks ago. It sounds a great idea of actually you know you give access to your data. So because what you really need to know is what how my data is being used honestly how my data is being used not what they want you to read um and then also you know how if, if i don't want somebody else to have access to my data how do i either prevent them to get access to their data or how do i get it recalled um because i think that, that's the challenge that we face and, and and that's the data you actually enter but then behind the scenes you've got all the sort of i suppose the data that's being collected about you about where you go what you do online you know if you were doing and 
I've seen this where somebody who's doing research sort of to do with buying a diamond ring as a special gift for a lady friend, should we say, that she went onto the same computer the next day and then there was offers for more diamond rings, ruined the sort of engagement surprise, should we say. Um, but there's other, there's other challenges where, you know, you sort of might randomly search for, you might have seen this happen as well, where you search for sort of star sign cancer. You know, you just want to know compatibility between cancer and Sagittarius. Um, then that information is still stored and then you get a letter from your insurance company because you also go into their website and say, you know, well, actually, do you know about cancer risk? We're going to put your premium up. I mean, complete misuse of data, but, you know, completely accidental misuse, but still, you know, it's now on your record and you can't explain that record. So I think, yeah, I think we're only, we're sort of, we're only just starting to understand the fact that, you know, the, the real value and then also but the biggest challenge is protecting our data and also uh, but also there is the good there's the the uh, you know the allowing the right organizations to to make use of your data you know the sort of the, the original store cards and things like that a great idea you know because if, if it knows you're going to run out of toilet roll yeah you know, it's great if it can reorder the toilet roll for you or ink for your pen or batteries you know it, it, and it's the careful balance about what can make your life easy enough what, what marketing people could use to their advantage. And then I suppose what says so the other part, how easy it is to misuse data. Yeah. So Lawrence, I, w- I have a question for you about, you know, what are you seeing in terms of kind of future risks or future trends that maybe people aren't thinking about right now? I think one of the biggest problems we're seeing is about actually the right to recall your data. Um, I'm on a couple of committees in Europe um, I've sort of also worked at the EU and things like that, but you know that the, the, when your data's consolidated, so I'm going to say I, I've got a, I've got an electric car. I gave my details to the car dealer. The car dealer gave my details to the, the the energy transmission company. The energy transmission company were planning where to put the power network, then gave that data to the charge points. They then gave that to the petrol stations that offer charge points. Now my data has gone to five or six places. I don't want my data, really. I don't want the petrol companies to be sharing my data to send me offers. When I, you know, when the worst thing is actually, and you get offers and you, you can't even plug your car in at the petrol station. You know, it's it's the sort of it, it, it's it's that sort of thing that I think you know a, a lot of the data has, is gone now. A lot of the sort of the data collected. I mean, the sort of the mapping systems, the websites offer, offer free mapping, which will tell you journey times, you know, data collection. So where really, where do you work? Where where are you traveling? Where do you live? I mean, I think the areas there. But I think, yeah, it, it's the ability to sort of own your, the future of it is really to own, own your data. And if you want to make it available for it to be monetized, how do you get, how do you get a share of that monetization? So where, do, how do you get discounts on things? How do you get, you know, value for sharing your data? And then also, if you don't want your data shared, how do you make, how do you protect yourself? Right. And then the, the new thing is, you know, uh, it's like a hot potato issue where people are like, well, it's not my responsibility. No, it's your responsibility. You know, so being able to tie that data to a, a real purpose that makes sense for the individual, I think is really important. Right. So. Um, what what things have you been surprised about uh, when you created this index? What what surprising things came up for you? People's reactions. Um, I, I suggest the sort of, in some cases, sort of rather sort of negative reactions in terms of we've got all this in hand. Probably the biggest, not not the well, the. The, the level of velocity actually at doing the index when those people people with digital take, tend to take it really personal. Digital's not seen as, you know, if, if something goes back to my car, if something goes wrong with my car, well, the Range Rover, so I will blame the dealer, but the um, but if something goes wrong with your car, if you get a puncture, you don't blame the car dealer. Yet there's sort of a very much with digital, it, it's a very sort of personal thing. Um, and I suppose that just, the challenge is people are, we're still in a sort of a market which is quite immature overall. Um, and one of the challenges is, <clears throat> and we're going to sort of why I bought the index, but sort of supplier accountability. 
know, the supplier said everything's okay. I want to believe the supplier, so I'm going to back up the supplier. Our findings might not really tie with that. So that's one of the challenges. Rob, over to you. Experience some of these as well. Yeah, I think yeah. I mean, yeah, some, some reactions, and I think I think you've just touched on it. Some sort of maybe to, you know defense, you know, defending if you like their own the, the positions, and you know, and we know it's difficult within organisations. You crossed across uh, some of the, one of the polls and the surveys earlier, you know, uh, looking at uh, different departmental interests, etc. And I think that I mean overall, I mean, but to the to to the initial question, and it surprised me. I guess is that organizations some of the organizations there there you know are okay they're not they're, they are they've got a lot of work to do shall we say and uh and, and an awful lot of them have so around about 90 percent of the organizations you know are have, have you know got quite quite a lot of work to do so i guess in that way that's 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 quite surprising and then even i think there's there's kind of a perception i think in the marketplace you put on a consent management platform etc and then that's you know going to be potentially your answer and i think that's what lawrence is alluding to there about suppliers one of the suppliers anyway uh, and actually things get worse rather than them than better and you know maybe i can't say i was altogether surprised by that but that could be one of the surprising uh, things that you take from it yeah, yeah. i think as, as oh sorry say, as you'll see when we sort of show the results in a little while um we, we sort of we created a sort of a scoring method so people could actually understand where they were and actually you know plot plot progress. The original scoring was to go up to about 500 points, and we've now we've got the first website that scored over 4,000. So that bit, it's surprising how high how high a website can score and still operate effectively. Because when you get to that sort of level, as you'll see, it, it has serious impacts on the website's operation, not just the privacy. Right. Yeah, right. So, right, the website can kind of slug along because it's trying to collect or turn through so much information. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, in, 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 a, in, in a real example, which we can show, it's sort of generating you know, m m about a thousand repeated cookies, which are generating about two gig of data every time somebody goes to their homepage. So that wow. it's actually having a negative impact. You just couldn't use that much information. There's, a, there's an error with the way it generates the but it's sort of it could have serious impacts on their marketing capability because it's destroying all the value because you've got so much data you can't make use of any right yeah that's true that's true very interesting uh well um let's talk about what people have to look forward to with the index over time so i think it's cool that when you all are, are going to start running you know the index month monthly for this that you'll be able to tell, you know, you have like a color coded system that tells whether the the company is getting better or worse. And so, uh, you know, I've seen some of the the screenshots you guys showed me of some of the other, uh, like some of the London index things that you guys have done. And some companies are really, you know, taking it to heart and being able to to improve, you know, their position. I think it's cool because it pinpoints at a high level, the, the issues that maybe companies need to look at more closely, right? Uh, and then if they can work to improve those things, that'll show up in the index, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with, so, sorry, go on, Lutz. Oh, yeah, I would say in terms of, I suppose, the, the future of the index, um, one of the most important things really is organizations getting an early warning of when things go wrong or when things are not as not as they thought um i mean we're, we're completely independent of suppliers providers <clears throat> i mean you know we've actually done indexes before in in the past where um we've ranked the actual data protection authorities themselves and data protection authorities have failed and scored scored poorly on the index you know, and what's happened is they've changed their content management system and the, and the, and the supplier didn't tell them what they were doing. You know, and it, 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 it could be quite embarrassing for a data protection authority that's issuing fines. Um, now, I'm not going to tell you which, which data protection authority it was for that question. Um, <laughs> but we, we, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen it, put it that way. Um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it's real that yeah, you 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 implement a new content management system that the vendor tells you everything's okay. You put you, sorry a content management system, you put a consent management system, and yet promises everything's going to be fine, 
and then it's it's not and you know organizations are organizations are you know in the main wanting yeah you know, so we'd say 30 percent of the world is sort of tends to be the retail and the media sector that want that want the data seven percent of the world are sort of don't really want to reuse and misuse data um and they're, they're, they're trying to comply um but also i think there's there's the thing about bringing in an in a way to independently rank sites the way to bring in supplier accountability and also some of the conversations we're having at um country level is how how you can automate policing of countries because you know as as we now as, as this market matures and you know the website's now the key operating function of a business you know we've gone from bricks to clicks as they say and covid has just accelerated this you know there's a whole new you know it, it's taken however many years to build you know build bricks buildings but you know, we need to have the same level of compliance respect and transparency really in the market we still work you, you can get the report privately yeah <laughs> <laughs> We're not answering those questions on air. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are, we are, we are actually, we are actually producing the rankings, the world rankings of the data protection authorities, um, should we say? But we're not oh, going to wow. put the deep. We're going to put the overall. <laughs> we're not going to put the overall position. It won't be the nth degree of information. Um, some of most do really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, once again, you know, it's I mean, it, it's really easy. Um, I mean, even even you know, even ourselves, we've you know, we, even when we've implemented you know some of the Google product, you know, you follow all the instructions and you read what happens. So you read read up and you read what they say, um, and then you actually run it. And you, you know, there's a thing. So if you're using YouTube and you don't want to set cookies, it advises you to use a domain called YouTube No Cookie. The clue would be in the name. One would think that there wasn't be anything set. Yet what it's doing is rather than setting you know standard standard cookies, it's setting a different type of object, and, and and this is the challenge everybody faces. And we we've done this for many years, and we've got quite thorough auditing capability. But no, the future of it is is really about independence and being able to really look at where you are and get an early warning. I mean, the essence is the service people can buy privately to you know, benchmark all of their websites. And it, you know, privacy is key to trust. Trust is key to a brand value. And organisations need a, an effective way to monitor what they're doing. And I just and yeah, just to add to that, that thing, something you alluded to there. I mean, you know, the, we all know with websites, particularly you know, any sizable website state. I mean, the only constant is change, right? So keeping on top of this stuff is difficult. It is challenging, as Lawrence alluded to. You know, um, new content being published every day, every year. You know, so. It, trying to keep on top of this, uh, particularly when third parties are involved, etc., you know, is going to be a challenge. And to have something to independently monitor it, uh, I think you know, it's going to prove increasingly valuable. And hopefully, the index uh, and the risk score is something that will help with that. I have a question that came up. I uh, let's see. I think this is from Corey. Uh, he says, uh, "How will the elimination of things like third-party cookies?" And moving towards a uh, privacy budget impact your scoring. Well, hope, yeah, hopefully, yeah, it's in the chat today. The, I mean, I think there is a I mean, Google, Google sort of announcement about you know we're going to not we're not going to allow we're going to block third party cookies. But there are quite a lot. Of oh, Lawrence, we may have lost yeah, you. Lawrence froze up. <laughs> The, oh, well, I'm sure he'll come back. The um, that's a great question uh, because cookies aren't going to go away. Types. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Then what, you froze up a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't think they'll be going away. Um, but also, there's not just cookies. You've got storage objects. You've got index objects. There's there's other technologies which are being used behind the scenes to replace them. Shall we say? Um, but also, first party cookies. You know, if you're setting you know, if you're setting 150 cookies, you know, when somebody visits your website, a first party type, you know, you don't, they, they are not, you know, there's still the regulation about the use of essential cookies. And, you know, it's Google block some of them, you know, Safari do some something along the ways, but, you know, fortunately the sort of the trust in those that sell the data and make money, those that monetize and make data, 
trusting them to not have access to data for something one would have to say how, well, what's the future of the business models if they're not collecting data in some way right and i just want to correct carrie is a she by the way she let me know that who asked that question right i agree so cookies aren't going to go away well cookies initially started to do things like uh, track your settings when you go to a website. Like if you had a favorite page you want to go to, or there's, you know, like you wanted to view in some certain way. So it sort of evolved into other things in terms of being able to track uh, information in, in ways, like you said, that aren't essential. Uh, so I don't think that's definitely, that's going to go away. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think cookies almost in a legal sense has become kind of a word play, right? So even though cookies, third party cookies may be eliminated, it doesn't eliminate the tracking that happens or it doesn't eliminate the, the data collection that's going to still occur. So I agree yeah. with that. Well, yeah, we're also, this is, there's, there's always been the fallacy that all cook, that cookies are bad, et cetera. I mean, most cookies are fine and most and a lot of cookies help you, you know, operate a website more effectively. I mean, you're not going to block all third party cookies because a lot of, you know, websites that use Stripe or use any payment gateway use cookies to do fraud detection and fraud management. Now, if if it's the sort of the backlash of if a Google website can't take a payment through Stripe because it's blocked all the cookies because somebody hasn't turned them into first party cookies, you know, organizations are going to say, well, actually, our website doesn't work with Google in the future. You know, it's that it's that level of, I mean, admittedly, there are some very, there are people, the sort of, I suppose, the, the technologists that really understand what you can do, and you can do some very, very naughty things with cookies, you can do incredibly intrusive things, you know, we say, um, with cookies, but 99, as ever, 99% of them are not intrinsically bad. 50% do do good, we say, or are really part of a website operation. You know, the argument about and is ana you know analytical data, is that anonymous? No, you can do a lot. And as they found out with the sort of presidential election and sort of like, I think it was Facebook, where once you've got enough data, the anonymization of data is irrelevant. Um, but, you know, cookies are intrinsic, intrinsic in how a lot of operations happen. You know, being able to identify and manage them will unless we change the way digital operates and HTTP and request management is checked, yeah, we, it could be a long way before we actually don't, don't rely on cookies. And if we rely on cookies, unless they're essential, consent has to be given, really. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I've made you the host, Lawrence. So if you want, we can, if you want a preview or a demo, anything, Feel free. Yeah. So should we more. show? Should we? Should we just do a? I mean, we'll do. Should we do a walkthrough of sort of the example? This the index. Well, not the example. This is the live index. And I yeah, think the, sure. Debbie's going to send out a link. You're going to Debbie's going to send a link to this afterwards. Anyone? Anyway, everybody will get a, a link to this and I'll post it, etc. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm recording the okay. session, so I will post it, and I'll make sure that Lawrence and Rob have a copy of it as well. Okay. Yeah. So what we do is. Um, we have um, scanning technology that goes to websites um, and it goes to lots of websites simultaneously. So, you know, going to, you know, 50, 500, 5,000 websites, the sort of scale we run to. I mean, you know, we're looking at sort of how you police countries. So how we can look at two to 5 million websites um, to benchmark them. And what we do is we'll, we'll go to a, we'll go to a website. We look at actually all of the objects and the tracking technologies that are being set before cons any consent has been given. <clears throat> now, there are there is an allowance for you know essential cookies for, or you know cookie yeah cookie management systems are essential as our load balancing. So it takes that takes that sort of thing into account. Um, and then what it's doing is it's go, once it's gone to the website, it's looked at the, the objects that are being set, say, before any consent has been given. And then based on the objects that are set, it'll create a score. And the score is intelligent, whereby <clears throat> if you've just got a few cookies which are doing load balancing, consent management, and you, so you score five out of ten, sorry, five, you score a total of five, you'll be green. There is a, we've created a green, so go from green to red in terms of how we report um, and you know, this this you know, this is this is the record this month where GoDaddy scored over 4,000 
Uh, when, when you talk about the value of an index, when you look at the cookies that are being set here, you can clearly see there's an error in the way their pages are generating cookies, and it's generating thousands of cookies on a page, which is, could cause considerable impact on performance as well. But what it's doing, it's looking at the cookies, and then it's looking at the sort of who, who actually is the ultimate data recipient. So if you've got double click, if you've got YouTube, if you've got Google, those will score higher than if you've got three, you know, you've got a Facebook cookie and you've got a Twitter cookie. Because they've been, a, it's looking at really what is the, so the score is really about what is the impact on privacy. So you've got the name of the organization, the domain, you've got the overall score here. And then what we've got is the change. So there's something happened. So what we can, so this is what we're talking about, sort of an early warning. So you know the likes of this website here that the change was nearly four. The change was nearly four thousand. So there's only a hundred. It did score a hundred before, and now it scores except for this sort of level here, um, which would indicate something's gone wrong. And then how you can track over time. So it, it, it used to be orange, um, and then went to red. Um, there's a website Dollar Tree here. They they look like they they used to score. They they used to be green, and now they score red. We're also building in the technology to in interact with the actual consent management platform. So we've got we've got the first three or four implemented. Um, one first is the most prevalent and the most obvious on websites. I mean, the Dollar Tree one is an actual website where we had a look at it to, just to check it, um, and they've implemented the, implemented a consent management platform. But the challenge is the consent management platform doesn't seem to be displaying properly. So it, it's a sort of a double whammy, really, of a problem. So you've got that, and with this, you can you can rank the website, so you can look at who who scores the best. And you know, Alphabet, Google scores you know, is, is in the sort of top top in terms of the scoring. Now, you know, I know people talk about Google as a sort of you know the big data collection thing, etc. But what we bizarrely find is when because we also do accessibility auditing um, for sort of various levels. And Alphabet is the because uh, we, we rank the Fortune and the sort of Nasdaq as well. Um, and Alphabet is probably one of the best sites for accessibility as well. So in terms of digital capability, you sort of have to point to you know Google leading. Uh, but yeah, so you can you can rank it in any way, or you can search. You can also click here, so you can click on on on, on here, and then that will take you into the detail of how, how the score is calculated. So we've got um, <clears throat> what is the overall score. To say there's an allowance, there's an allowance because you know, cookies cookies are used by websites. And then as you go through, um, yeah, we originally thought the scale would be 100. Then we thought the scale was 500, um, etc. Um, and now now this is the number of sort of cookies that are looking at it. Um, you then get a breakdown of all the domains which are setting and then what type of things. So you know the cookies. So you know so all of these traditionally are you know the old, the third party cookies. But then there's the web storage objects in the database. So that's the sort of top level. And then what you can do is <clears throat> click into the detail. So you can see exactly what is the cookie in use. Um, <clears throat> and you can open it up and say, well, I want to see the double click. I want to see the name of the cookie, the journey the cookie goes on, where the data is going to, how long the cookie lasts, and then the size of the, the size of the object. Oh, really, that is sort of, so in terms of a very sort of brief walkthrough of what we do and the index a quick look at it um any over to yourselves the sort of questions debbie any thoughts comments well as i said i really like it um because it does give you a high level view of of things instead of you having to dig for it right so being able to just go in and take a look at that about how the websites are operating i think is really helpful um but then Two, I just want to mention to people that some companies that you deal with, obviously, Lawrence, have lots of different websites. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, if you want to go in independently and search for different uh, websites, just know that, you know, these uh, some of these big companies have many, many different websites. So we're just, you know, taking their main domains and, and looking at them. Um, I think it's extremely helpful, you know, especially if you're, let's say you're working with a company, uh, you want to get just a really quick snapshot of where they are in terms of their public facing, you know, website, being able to pop their, you know, information in and get some high level insights really quickly is very, very helpful, I think. So, yeah. 
yeah, you, yeah. yeah, you can go onto the you can go onto the website. I think yeah, Debbie shared the link. But you can go onto the website, our website here. Type in any web address right here, and then it'll run run the site through. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, and runs it through. Um, so, so you had a question there about is it meaningful to Alphabet to point to A B? Yeah, right. Yeah. So the reason, yeah, this what we when we do an index. We're very specific in terms of the constituents and the indexes and the naming of the index. Um, there are a lot, yeah. The Google's got quite a few names, quite a few companies, but their their list, their 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 main corporate entity is ABC.xyz, which is their sort of corporate website. Um, we try to do the we try to do the same type of website, should we say? So what's listed as the main website? So if you were to do a, a look up on sort of Forbes. What would be the main corporate website for each of the, each of the entities? Hence, that's why we do abc.xyz no domain that, that rather than doing google.com. Yeah, right. I think it's, it's probably worth saying again, uh, just sort of repeating there. So, that index you see obviously is all for the main sites for those uh, corporate bodies. But as you rightly point out, Debbie, you know, there could be an organization with 10, 50, 100 thousand ten thousand domains or whatever so we can you know also build indexes uh for you know one organization's sites or any number of sites or combination of sites so that's you know we find that um you know companies find that really useful as well obviously because they can then look at the sites that are performing the best and then the worst and and look where they can focus their attention if they want to take remedial type action so that's uh, by building your own privacy index is something that we can we can help with too yeah, it's sort of a benchmark or a, or a scorecard. It's meant to be kind of a living, uh, you know, checkpoint, right? So yeah. you want to be able to see over time how these things improve or get worse. And then, you know, hopefully uh, companies who see it uh, that want to improve, they'll use this as a tool for where to pinpoint, you know, their efforts. I think it's only going to accelerate now because people, you know, as we see the regulations, they're really kind of cracking down on kind of third party data transfer, uh, you know, and with looking at cookies and, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, Google and, uh, and Apple kind of moving away from uh, systems or ways that, that uh, identify individuals too closely, right? So especially for advertising, uh, you know, unless the person gives their consent, they want to make that data collection a little bit more general uh, and, and, you know, and they're doing it in groups, right? Like cohorts and things like that. Uh, because, you know, I think it's important that individuals have more control over their data and the data that they give over. So. Uh, companies that are able to have trust, uh, have consumers trust them, will give data to those companies. So companies, in my view, that have first party cookies where you've already consented to that, they'll have kind of the most valuable data. What are your thoughts? Oh, oh um, yeah, I mean... Go, Lawrence. I was going to say, oh, I think, yeah, I mean, without, um, say, if, if, an, if, if you think of data as the sort of next electricity or sort of the thing that's, that powers organizations in the future, if organizations misuse that and um, start to get lots of complaints about misuse of data, it, it's a regulatory area that can only grow and will probably grow quite quickly. Um, as But I think the sort of, in terms of the regulation, so we work with a number of the sort of regulations around the world. Um, it will probably get draconian their sort of powers about what they can do. I mean, one of them we're talking to about the, you know, the concept of a three strike rule. So the, the first time, you know, you'll get a you'll get a polite warning when you get it wrong the first time. Second time, you might get a, a, a fine, shall we say. Then the third time is a case of appeal, appear, you know, appearing. And if you haven't got the justification to operate, and you can't demonstrate that you're going to improve. Um, they're looking at even the, the power to remove domain, remove a domain. But they, they you know, a, a ten million, fifty million dollar fine to Facebook or Google or etc. It's yeah, 
I wouldn't say point change, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's an insignificant, but it's, it's not a significant, it doesn't have a significant impact on them. Um, and we don't have the concept of a global regulator. Right. Um, and these organizations are operating globally. What's a yeah. question about Facebook, which we'll cover in a moment if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that as well. Uh, go for it. You go first and I'll chime in. Yeah. So, should, should we get Carrie on? Carrie, Carrie can, you, can she just join the panel? <laughs> She's asking all the questions. <laughs> Welcome. Good um, questions. No, Good questions. No, no. They, they, well, I, I think there, 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 is, there is a way to score very low, low on the system. Um, um, you know, we're not we haven't, this isn't so we can't give legal advice, we can't give legal opinion, etc. But it, it's very easy to sort of not collect cookies on the, when, on the very front of your website. But I think with something like Facebook, um, let's say they're, 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 they're relatively clever in terms of how they collect data. So they're collecting data on ev with ev using everybody else's website because they put you've got the Facebook buttons that say Facebook features which you can collect data and set cookies but it doesn't feature on Facebook's website and also I think the majority of data I don't know once again I don't know specifically but I suggest that the majority of data that Facebook collect is after people log in when we're doing the index we're not logging into a website we're only looking at the very very front of what's set without consent because I, without, I don't know, I'm, I've not, one of the few people who was probably not use Facebook much, but I don't have a Facebook um, name, user account. And I would suggest that really when you log into Facebook or you actually, you, you have an account on Facebook, the terms and conditions will be quite strict in terms of how much data, what they can do. And their argument will be, well, they've got consent after you log in. So they can afford to store low, they can afford to, on the very front end, be, 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 be not not raise red flags to regulators, should we say? Yeah. Is that okay, Gary? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think sometimes. So, right. So this tool really is looking at the the public facing website of you know not like your account or you know. So this, again, Facebook is a little bit different because they're a social media thing. So when you log in, you get your own account, you get an ID, and you're there, uh, you've in order to use it, you have to consent to a ton of things. So a lot of it is data that you've consented to. Um, you know, unfortunately, my my opinion about this, especially with free services, you know, they can get to you to consent to almost anything. So the sky is the limit in terms of consent. So in exchange for a free service, you consent to a ton of things that you probably would not have consented to if you use the paid service, I'll put it that way. Because <laughs> there, there are different laws about uh, paid services and in terms of being able to quantify, you know, what the true value is of, you know, the service that you're giving. But in, in a free service, there really is very, you know, the sky is the limit. So I'd like to tell people, you know, you can't sell your organs, but that's about it. So you can consent mm -hmm. to almost anything with a free service uh, uh, that you use. Yeah, I, I, no, that's a good point, Debbie. I think as well, you know, I, I think it's worth pointing out, you know, the index and the scores that we put to, to put out there are there to help people and guide them on their on their road to compliance. Uh, and yeah, and, and the fact that. Obviously, Facebook's is a slight, slightly different, and but you know, I, I've come across organisations where their headline, their corporate site, their dot com site has no cookies. But as soon as you go onto any of their satellite sites or any of the other domains, the thousands and thousands and thousands, etc. You know, we're not here, and the index is not about trying to, you know, to 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 track those people down. We 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 really the index is about people who, you know, we can identify quickly early warning sign of risk, et cetera, and are looking to manage that risk. And there'll always be people, there'll always be sites and ways, I'm not saying in this case, that is the case, but I'm just saying that that's, but I think we can all see from the, uh, so, so for some of the uh, lawsuits that are out there, I think Facebook is one that features fairly heavily in some of the um, litigation that we're seeing. So yeah, they're, they're certainly not immune from this. Right. Post post account setup stuff. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So, well, um, well, we're getting close to the end here. So do you all have any like parting thoughts that you like to say? Um, I, I did put in the chat 
uh, the link to my website, uh, you know, where you can look at the privacy risk index, uh, the Fortune 1000, and then also the link to uh, Privacy and Cookies Rethink Privacy uh, Index, where you can use it for any company uh, domain. So what, what do you guys like to say? Well, for myself, thank you. Well, if there's if any of the questions, do do let us know. I mean, via Debbie's got our details. Um, really, no thanks. I hope hopefully it's useful. Over to you, Rob. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think this has been fantastic. I want to thank Debbie again for having having us on. I mean, this has been a great way for us. I mean, the index is about awareness at the end of the day, and because I, I I'm sure when people uh, and organisations become aware of the the issues then you know they're gonna they're gonna start tackling them that's gonna be good that's gonna be good for for everyone so um yeah i, th I want to thank debbie for the opportunity and i hope it's started and we're obviously going to run these run these regularly these index regularly it's the start of um you know a more more kind of education uh, about what's happening out there with uh, probably unbeknownst to us most most of the time yeah I definitely want to do it again, especially to see uh, a change difference, you know, what's changed month to month uh, to certain companies and what are kind of the most surprising, you know, changes or the most drastic changes, whether they be good or bad uh, in this. And then, you know, again, as you know, the world is changing around their thoughts about third party cookies, you know, we're probably going to see less of those. Obviously, they're going to be different ways of tracking. Uh, but then I think we're going to start to see companies trying to uh, get more first card party cookies. So things where people are consenting uh, to those cookies. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think you really, I mean, hopefully, I mean, the same, this level of reporting and sort of auditing has never really been seen before. And, you know, it, it's not a, it's not a sort of reason to point fingers. It's really, I think, in the in the main most most people want to respect privacy hopefully most people want to respect privacy most you know they want to be you know uphold their sort of social responsibility but also they they understand the importance of privacy and transparency and data protection not from just being sued by the regulator but like i say just in general good behavior um now you know, now they now it's easy it's much easier to see where you are um, we're not affiliated to any consent management platform, any privacy company, any regulator. It's completely independent. You know. And they say, like, as you see from that list with GoDaddy, you know, there's something seriously gone wrong with their website. And it may actually be something that might help them fix it. But hopefully, yeah, let's see what the changes are next month. And then, yeah, hopefully see more people next week, next month. Next week, next month. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Well, thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, this has, you know, been very illuminating. It's helped me a lot. I think companies when they're dealing with privacy that uh, I think their website is kind of like your digital storefront, correct? So being able to assess that is probably kind of the low, low hanging fruit. Though to me, those are the things that companies can impact pretty quickly, I would say. Uh, you know, once they know what the, the problem is and what the risk is, uh, but obviously there are other back office things that companies need to work on. But I think being able to get this straightened out is really important. And it, it you know, is a good tool for individuals. So there are companies that you want to do business with, you want to sort of know, are they the type of company that respects privacy? And then for companies, you know, this may be a good scorecard for you and your organization. So this may point to areas that you may want to improve or think about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, excellent, excellent. I guess we'll, we'll end here. This is great. Uh, thank you all for being able to attend this session. And uh, again, we will, um, we made a recording, so we'll keep a copy of this and be able to pull it, at, pull it out. And I think that anyone who signed up will get a link to this as well. So, excellent. Thank All you, right. everyone. Okay, well, Thank you, guys. Everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Take bye -bye. Okay. Mm -hmm.